So we mentioned that the floating point uh, continuous representation can be based on uniform interval. So for example, in this map, <coughs> the RGB is defined for each value at 20 meter elevation interval. And it works pretty well and we can see very nicely the structure of topography. And you can also see that the histogram is fairly uniformly distributed. We have, for most of the area, we have about the same uh, number of grid cells uh, for each elevation. However, this approach doesn't work very well when we try to display uh, entire North Carolina. And you can see how the elevations are distributed in North Carolina. Most elevations or most grid cells, the largest area, is in the coastal plain. And that's where the elevations are way much smaller than the 500 meter step that we would have to use if we wanted to use equal or uniform interval. So, what to do? We can use a different type of color table. And one uh, type of color table that works well for this type of data is so-called histogram equalized color table. And we will talk about histogram equalization when we will be talking about, about the, how to rescale raster data. So for now, let's just remember that histogram equalized color table uh, distributes the colors based on the cu cumulative histogram of the map and based on the area. So we have more, uh, more colors in those, uh, for those values that cover large area. And this approach highlights rich but subtle coastal topography. You can see what a beautiful structure came out uh, compared to this map. We can also solve this issue by creating a custom color table, a table with two uniform intervals, uh, let's say 50 meters for the coastal plain and 500 meters for the Piedmont and mountains. So that works pretty well as well, but you, you need, it's more subjective. Now, there are some type of raster maps that are specifically challenging in terms of creating color tables. And one of them is flow accumulation that we will be using towards the end of the course. And you can see that in the, the histogram for flow accumulation is all very difficult to display because most of the cells are really in the range of very few very small values and then the large values have very very small number of cells you can see this very thin green blue all the way towards the red color and that's where we have the very high values of flow accumulation and the values go from 1 to 73,000 so, so when we display such data, we can see something, but we are really seeing only the maximum values and everything else uh, just falls into one, uh, one color. So very similar situation as we had with the elevation for North Carolina. So let's try then histogram equalization. So you can see much, much richer structure here and to and this may be even more that we want because we now don't uh, can't distinguish very well the major rivers so for some application this may really be uh, too much information that the histogram equalized color table pulled out so another option is to use logarithmic distribution logarithmic color table and you can see again like for some application this may be the right one because you get uh, you get distinguished the major uh, major rivers and major streams and then there are 
uh, but you still get the information about the smaller streams that was missing in this map. Now let's look at raster uh, hillshade. Hillshade is another very nice tool how to bring out or display the relation between topography and certain theme. And it is essentially a color composite where for intensity we use illuminated topography and we will talk at the uh, geomorphometry, one of the geomorphometry lectures about how this illuminated topography is computed. And then we use our theme for color, uh, which is uh, then combined as hue with the, um, uh, with the intensity. And the result will be a shaded map that highlights the structure of topography along uh, by, by both using the shaded topography and the color. So here we have both the theme and hill shade uh, based on the same map and that's uh, elevation. But we can use any, um, any color map for theme. For example, land use is very useful to show the relationship between the land use and topography. Here we have uh, an example where we are using uh, hill shade uh, along with uh, watershed basins. And again, this highlights the relationship between the basins and the uh, topography. Now with vector display, uh, we, are, we can use extensively not only color, but also a rich set of symbols. Both for lines and points and for polygons, the symbols, uh, instead of symbols, we can use different types of fill. And uh, colors and symbols for vector data are assigned based on attributes. And we have talked about attributes for vector data already. And again, the general rules for quantitative and qualitative data applies with quantitative data. We try to use the same hue with, uh, and change intensity for qualitative data. We are trying to keep the intensity the same and change the hue um, depending on the attribute. Here is a very simple example of uh, vector data display, uh, the streets and the wolf line, uh, bus lines and stops as point data. Very simple. Usually vector data are uh, displayed in much more complex way. But for data analysis, this may be, uh, this may be enough. And then finally, we have displayed raster and vector data and what is still missing to make it a map. And here I really have used very, very si simple example with very few uh, data, uh, data sets combined. So what we have missing, it is the georeferencing information. Every map needs to have information about where this where the image is located on the surface of the earth and we already talked about it that's done by geographic coordinates or projected coordinates so we need to include some information about these coordinates and these coordinates we can use either uh, projected coordinates or geographic coordinates so here on the right you can see that this grid uh, uh, shows very nice squares and these are two kilometer two kilometer squares uh, in state plane meters and you can see uh, on the right that we have uh, we have a grid that is rectangular that doesn't really have squares and this is projected geographic coordinates one minute size so this also shows you uh, essentially the distortion that we have um, compared to the uh, uh, compared to the spheroid. And our next topic in the next section 
will be visualization in three dimensions.